finding like moments of truth inside of me to connect with. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, this is really close to like who I am for real. Like she's a wife, she's submissive, she's a lesbian. So <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, episode 15. And baby, the way that we are at the finish line. Next week is the finale. I said, thank you, Jesus, won't he do it? Thank you, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. Because we have suffered through this season long enough. And shout out to Jamie That's Me. I really enjoyed her on Candy's recent speak on it. And when I tell you that she told nothing but the truth, when she said, look, Candy, this season was just okay. It could have been a lot better, but it really wasn't landing. And she really gave a fair and honest critique because again, this season was pretty much a flop. There were so many opportunities to tell personal stories and we didn't get that. Seeing Marlo bring up her nephew's passing as a way to pretty much take down Candy, absolutely pathetic. This alliance with Shireen, Marlo, and Sonya, I can't stand to watch it. Now, Sonya, if you keep that energy that we all saw from you in last week's after show, when you got on Sheree about Martel not paying for the dinner bill, I wouldn't mind seeing you come back on because I was here for you. You got Miss Sheree together. You were like, well, by the way, my husband offered to pay and you guys said no. You clocked her. But again, I'm ready for this season to be wrapped up. And I'm actually looking forward to the reunion. It seems like from what Candy's saying on her speak on it, that the reunion was lit. It was a lot of drama and that it was her against everybody. So I said, okay, let's go on and tune in then. But y'all, I have a lot to say as you guys can see. So let's just jump right on into it because we don't have a minute to spare. Now we open up the episode with a few short scenes. Kenya's at her hair salon with Cynthia and Cynthia has just announced that her divorce has been finalized. Now she's like, Kenya chop chop. Within a two and a half year time span, I got married and divorced. And here you are still going through this divorce. Like baby, it's time to wrap this up. And Cynthia, I agree because they've been going through this divorce longer than they've been married. And we're all tired for Kenya. Kenya's divorce reminds me of Bethany Frankel's divorce. If you guys watched New York, you remember when Bethany got with Jason and they were only married for two years and their divorce took seven years. A hot raggedy mess. And a quick side note, I watched Kenya's interview with Carlos King last week. And when she admitted that she shot her shot first, I was like, girl, what? Come again? No. Mm -mm. It was doomed from the start. You know what? Let me get off of that topic because I don't want to start a fight about that. But I'm just not really here for women shooting their shots. I'm not a believer in that. But again, we can talk about that another day. But Kenya, I'm praying that before 2023 ends, that your divorce is finalized. Now the scene with Sonya going to see Dr. Jackie, I thought it was a cute scene. I don't have too much to say, but I think that it's so funny that Dr. Jackie is pretty much Every black Bravo celebrity's doctor is either her or Dr. Simone. Again, not a whole lot to say about this scene. I'm happy for Sonya, so we can just move right on along. <laughs> now, a quick side note. I noticed how when they pulled up to Dr. Jackie's, they pulled up in a Bentley. I was like, now, did Sonya and Ross have a Bentley last season? That Bentley looked brand new. I said, let me find out. <laughs> Now we jump on over to Candy at Home and they have officially begun filming their movie, The Past. Drew is the lead. Todd is so impressed by Drew's acting skills. He's like, the thing about Drew, she's a real actress. It doesn't take her 14 takes. She gets it done like that. So we see that Candy and Todd are filming this movie at their own home. But we find out from Todd that since they're filming at their house, they're saving a lot of money. I think Todd said that they're saving like 
six figures. Now let's stop right here because I watched the after show and the way Marlo and Sheree pissed me off so badly because how dare either one of them try to make fun of Candy and Todd talking about, oh, they're just so cheap and you know how Candy is, child. She don't like to pay anybody either. She real cheap and when she pays you, she pay you like this much. <laughs> but you know what too? It could be because Candy don't like to pay a lot. There you go. Candy don't like to pay. Not a lot. Oh no. No, she's big. She'll oh, she pay, but it's gonna be that much. It's gonna pay. be little. Yeah. That oh, much. Oh, well, see, so she might that's not a, pay. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> and now Marlo talking about, oh, and I remember when they were pitching a show idea for me and the pay for the show was so little. Now, Marlo, get off of that because we already know the tea. Funky Dineva made several videos addressing what really happened. You are the reason for that show on Wee TV not being picked up. So don't sit up here and try to blame Candy and Todd talking about, oh yeah, they wanted to pay me peanuts for that Wee TV show. Girl, shut up. I hate the way Candy has helped so many people in this group and then they turn around and try to play her like she's the bad guy. Sheree, the absolute gall for you of all people to talk about anybody not wanting to pay and being cheap. You were sitting up there last week defending Martel not paying for a $1,200 dinner at Nobu. But you wanna say that Candy and Todd are cheap and don't like to pay. For the past 14 years, you have been in the news because you have not paid people. You didn't pay your contractors. Remember when you were building Chateau Charest and your contractors walked off the job? and they sued you because you didn't want to pay them. Landscapers have quit and sued you. And let's not forget last season when you didn't want to pay Drew that $13.50 for that joint birthday party that you threw for Kenya and Marlo. How dare you talk about anybody's cheap and they don't like to pay. I just feel like Sheree lacks so much self-awareness. It's sad. I don't know what planet she's living on. But for you to be so delusional and standing 10 toes down in it, I'm like, you guys are jealous of candy and that's all this is. And also, you guys didn't even want to donate to Sonya's charity. And Sonya's one of your best friends. You didn't want to donate $5,000. But yeah, you want to call somebody else cheap. But we see Drew and Monietta on set. Drew says that she's excited, but she's nervous about the sex scene. So Candy tells her that, don't worry, they have an intimacy coordinator there. Drew's relieved. And the way Drew kept talking about this sex scene, Drew, you're trying to sell us something that we're just not buying. I feel like it's one of those things where when you protest too much about something, you're trying to cover up how you really feel and we can all see right through you. At the end of the day, it's 2023, nobody cares. So the fact that you're acting so weird about it, it's a dead giveaway that there's something else going on. And I love how Candy said, girl, you don't need to get into character for this. Like, you know what to do. <laughs> so now they change gears and they bring up the whole Courtney drama and if Courtney called Drew a bitch or not. And now we see Manetta play Drew the video. It looked like Courtney was calling Sonya a bitch. I was like, oh, so I don't think that she was calling Drew a bitch. I think that she actually was telling the truth. She definitely said the word bitch, but I don't think she was referring to Drew in that moment. I really think that she was talking to Sonya when she said it because she was pointing right at Sonya. I don't know. What do you guys think? But I was like, yeah, at this point, I think that Drew should just drop it and no pun intended. <laughs> but I think that Drew just let it go with Courtney. Courtney, yes, she's very thirsty, but I really think in this moment, she actually was talking to Sonya when she said, and this bitch right here, because she was looking dead at Sonya and she was pointing at her. So again, I don't know. Honestly, I'm over it. I really don't care at this point, but I just said, yeah, nobody really knows now who she was referring to when she said bitch. But either way, Drew, just leave it alone. And the fact that you and Ralph are divorcing, you won't have to see Courtney again. So just let her go, sis. <laughs> so now we jump on over to Sheree and she's at home with a party planner. Now, anytime I see Sheree with a party planner, I get nervous. If you remember Atlanta at its peak, season two, episode one, when Sheree came up with that infamous line, who gonna check me, boo? and that party planner was popping out a vein. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was iconic. I will say that was definitely one of Sheree's best moments. But anytime I see Sheree with the party planner, I get nervous because we all know that when it comes to an invoice being sent Sheree's way, she is Stevie Wonder to it. She's not trying to pay nothing. <laughs> Cheap people are such a pet peeve of mine. I think that it is such a terrible quality to have. Penny pinchers, when the bill comes around, you got crocodile arms. I can't stand that. Especially cheap people who are rich. You only buy the best for yourself when it comes to everybody else. You wanna be real cheap, don't wanna spend, don't wanna splurge, mm-mm. And cheap men, absolutely the F not. So Sheree's like, I'm a first time glamma. This is my first glam baby. She wants it to be over the top. She's like, I want my baby to have everything. So the planner's asking her, what's the budget? And she's like, budget? What's that? There is no budget. This sounds so eerily familiar to season one. The first episode ever. Remember when they went to Intermix and the sales associate showed her that Fendi Python bag for $6,000? And she was like, you know what, I'ma get it. And she said, budget, what's that? And right then and there, I knew that she was full of it. I said, yeah, mm-mm, she's trying way too hard. She's really trying to sell us that she's this it girl who has it like that, and that's not the case. But anyhow, I digress. Now, if you're the party planner and you happen to stumble across this video, can you please DM me or email me? and let me know if Sheree actually paid you. I'm dying to know. There is a big part of me that does not believe that she actually pulled out her wallet and paid. Me and the good people back at home are dying to know because again, when it comes to Sheree and paying, it's a bit dicey. <laughs> now we jump right back to Drew on set and it's time for the big sex scene. And you see Drew saying that having to connect with another woman doesn't come easy to her. And I'm like, Drew, why do you think that you need to keep saying this every single time? You don't think that you're doing a bit much? It's clear that you might have some feelings and that's fine, but there's obviously something else that's going on. Also, if you felt this uneasy and this nervous and this uncomfortable, then why'd you sign up to be in this movie where the lead character is with a woman? Like, let's make it make sense. Because if I felt a way, if I felt like, oh, I really can't do this role, I don't feel comfortable with it, then I would pass on it. At the end of the day, Drew, you're high key trying to convince yourself about something because you're not convincing or fooling us. But I will say that while they were showing Drew filming that scene, the scene definitely looked believable. I said, Drew, you definitely dug deep into your acting bag for that one. <laughs> she didn't look nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all already know how I feel about Marlo, so we're going to skip past her scene. That's very nice that she wanted to have an award ceremony honoring people who have been in foster care. But again, I just don't like Marlo. I don't like her attitude. I just don't like how toxic she is. I don't like how evil she is. I don't like how she hits below the belt. I don't like her delusions. She honestly believes that she can say whatever she wants to people, treat people any old way, and then think that they wanna deal with her and be friends with her. It's a no for me. And for the three Marlo stands who come into my comments, hey, you're always welcome, I love you too, but you've been watching me for quite some time now, and I already told you back in the first recap that I would be skipping over all of Marlo's scenes this whole entire season. So don't act brand new now and don't be surprised and don't sit up there getting mad at me saying, oh my gosh, Brooke, that's so mean that you skipped her scene. You already knew that. This ain't a surprise. <laughs> but I still love you though, okay? Like I, I still love you, even though we're not on the same side about things when it comes to Miss Marlowe. But again, it's, it's all love. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the day of Sheree's big sip and see party for her glam baby. Everybody's getting ready. Now the theme is that everybody has to show up in nude and Sheree is going to be wearing blush. So as Sheree is getting made up, we see that there is a full staff getting the house ready. 
Now, Sheree, I'm going to pay you a compliment. You did that. The decorations were flawless. Those florals were absolutely stunning. And let's be real, Sheree, you really threw this party to show off. This was not just about showing off your granddaughter. You just wanted to show off and flex and throw around some money. That's all that was. And I loved how Candy clocked you too. Like, yeah, girl, this party was for you. But anyhow, we see Sonya arrive first and she goes up to see Sheree. Sheree's still getting all made up. So as they're talking, Sheree's party planner walks in the room He's giving her the whole rundown of how the night's gonna go. He's like, in 10 minutes, I'm gonna have the champagne being passed around. The harp has just arrived and the cake has arrived. So now you have Sheree talking about, oh, so what's this costing me? We're probably at $200 a plate, right? Or probably more than that. Now, Sheree, if you're so well-to-do, if you're so used to the finer things, then you should know that discussing how much you paid for a party or how much you paid for a vacation or a car or a bag or a shoe, that's in poor taste. Everybody can see with their own eyes that you spent a very nice coin on this party. For you to say it out loud, I'm like, you're just so tacky. And it's so funny how you want to flex on somebody, but at the same time, you want to have alligator arms with other things, like paying a bill. Act like you're used to something. Act like you've been here before. Like, really? Like, at your big age, talk about the price that you paid for something. Like, it's just so tacky and it's embarrassing. You know who Sheree also reminds me of? Toya from Married to Medicine. Now, I've never been a big Married to Medicine watcher, but every time I do watch, Toya is always trying to showboat and brag, and she's trying to impress people who not only have more than her, but people who aren't impressed. And it's always embarrassing. She's always either name dropping or talking about how much she paid for something. And it's like, I have secondhand embarrassment because as you're trying to sit up here and flex, you don't realize how tacky you look. And her and Sheree both suffer from having delusions of grandeur and living above their means. Now we jump right back to Drew and she's going over the lines with her onset assistant. So she's talking about how she can't believe that they're doing all these scenes back to back like this and it's so much work. And then all of a sudden Drew starts talking about how she feels uncomfortable filming in Candy's house. And then when she said, honestly, if it's not a Lifetime movie or above, then I'm gonna pass on it. Like, I don't do all this little stuff. No, I said the nerve of you to try and shit on this movie, but had this movie role not come through, what would you have been doing? Because we don't hear anybody talking about Drop It With Drew. I don't remember any other movies that you've been in recently besides that Lifetime movie that came out last year. So for you to act like you're so booked and busy and in such high demand, you're another one who suffers from delusions of grandeur because again, sis, how dare you? If it's just so beneath you, then why did you accept the role in the first place? And if you can't stand it, then drop out of the movie and give Candy and Todd their check back. I'm sorry that it's too late for Candy to put a stop payment on that check because I would have snatched that check right back. Like how dare you shading me when I put you on? I'm paying you, but yet you want to sit up here and read me down but how my stuff is low budget. Like how does that work? Now when Ralph showed up to the trailer to surprise Drew, this whole interaction between them was just weird. It felt like they're both playing us. So now it's just Drew and Ralph in the trailer and Drew's like, I feel like I haven't seen you. When I came back home, you were asleep. Then when I woke up this morning, you were gone. And Ralph's response to that was so weird. He was like, well, ain't nothing going on at 3 a.m. except for the street walkers. And I was like, what kind of response is that? Your wife is addressing how when she woke up this morning, you weren't there. So what does that mean about at 3 a.m. nothing's out but the street walkers? Like, sir, what? And the fact that you said that, I'm like, oh, what were you out doing while she was on set, sir? Because we all know that Ralph likes to cheat. Ralph is such a mess. Like, you can look in his eyes and see that he's crazy. So anyhow, Drew is going on about how much she loves playing her character. She loves the role playing Nina. She's like, I'm finding parts of myself in her and I really connect with her. And I feel like Nina is close to who I am in real life. Now, the way I was staring at Drew, like Drew, if there's something that you wanna tell the class, then just share it. 
because you're obviously dropping hints about something. But she goes on to say that she loves the fact that Nina is a wife and she's submissive. And now Ralph interrupts her and he's like, and she's also a lesbian. Then Drew's like, Ralph, that's all you care about. That's all you want to talk about. So now Ralph wants to know about the whole sex scene. He's like, was there tongue? What did you guys do? Drew is being kind of coy. She's feeling a bit uncomfortable, a bit shy. And now she points out that Ralph has never smiled this much. I mean, the way Ralph was grinning from ear to ear, I had never seen all 32 of his teeth before. I rolled my eyes so hard when Ralph was like, did you have an orgasm? And I was like, Ralph, you do realize that on movies and shows, they're not actually having real sex. Like it is simulated. Nobody's genitals are actually touching. So you do know there was nothing really going on. They made it look real. I, I just couldn't believe it. I said, how old are you, Ralph, to be acting like this. So now we jump right back over to Sheree and everybody is arriving to the sip and see. So we see Candy arrive, Cynthia's there. And a quick side note, did anybody catch how they showed Sheree's sister? Now, all the years that Sheree has been on this show, we've seen her kids and her mother. I had no idea that Sheree had siblings. For some reason, I thought that Sheree was an only child it sort of felt like when we found out that Giselle had a brother and a sister, I was like, Giselle has siblings? Are they close? Do they talk? But I was just like, oh my gosh. I just always find it really weird when these ladies are on our screens for such a long time and we're just now finding out that they have siblings. It's like, why haven't we ever seen them before? All these events that Sheree has had, why are we just now finding this out in season 15? But anyhow, I digress. So anyhow, we see Candy, Sonya, and Cynthia talking, and they're asking Candy about the movie, how it's going with Drew. Candy's like, oh my gosh, the movie's going really well, and Drew is doing a great job. But Candy is a bit annoyed at the fact that since they're filming the movie in their house, they shot that sex scene in their bed. Now I said, Candy, you have nobody else to blame but yourself and Todd. You guys wanted to save money on location fees. You guys wanted to have it at your house. So that's what's going to happen. If it were me and I filmed the movie in my home, I would have said, okay, you guys can film every other scene and then film the sex scene in a hotel or at an Airbnb. I was like, girl, at the very least, you and Ty do have the money to buy another bed. So maybe just do that. But I said, let this be a lesson though to next time film it elsewhere. Don't film in your house. So we see Bob stumbling through the door. I just said, Bob looked a hot mess. Every time I look at that man, I say, Sheree was really dedicated to the coin because there's not a chance in hell. <laughs> Bob couldn't have touched me with a 10 foot pole. And if I'm being honest, the way Bob dogged Sheree out for years, during their marriage, after their marriage. There's really no way that we would have a relationship. Like, you sat up there, didn't want to pay me child support, let our house get foreclosed on, you were a terrible dad, you weren't there, pretty much a deadbeat father, but now you want to come around to celebrate your first grandchild? Like, that's just really crazy to me. When I look at Bob, I see a narcissist. Like, that man truly doesn't care about anybody but himself. And the way he's able to go around smiling, like, that's okay, that's really sad. And in all seriousness, though, Sheree would really benefit from therapy because she needs to get to the root of why she keeps attracting and staying with Dusty's like Bob, Tyrone, and Martel. There is a clear pattern. I'm like, damn, Sheree, you have yet to find a decent man. And I'm not even trying to be funny, but was Bob on something? He came in just sweating. He looked a hot, greasy mess. I was just like, what's going on? His shirt looked all unbuttoned and wrinkled. I was just like... <laughs> and I want to know something else. Does Bob still have any money left or no? Like, how is he surviving? Now, as the party's going on, we see Courtney arrive, Kenya and Akilah pull up. 
I screamed when Kenya got out the car and the woman in the driveway was like, oh, what's your name, miss? And Kenya was like, it's Kenya Moore. You should know that already. Like, you should know who I am. I was like, Kenya, just leave the woman alone. Like, she's just trying to do her job and get paid at the end of the night. Like, don't make her job harder than it needs to be. <laughs> we also see Shamia pull up and Shamia and Courtney are friends. So they're catching up. And Candy also had me screaming. She was like, oh, okay. Well, finally, somebody actually knows who Courtney is. <laughs> so we see Sheree finally come down. I thought that Sheree's gown was pretty. And so she's taking pictures. Bob gets in the pictures with her. He's trying to play around, talk about, oh, where should I place my hands? Like on your hips? I was just like, Bob, you had Sheree for, I think, what, 15 years you guys are married? You were an awful husband. You were out there cheating. So don't try to get all touchy feely now. Bob would not be able to touch me. Like, I don't even think I would even allow him in my home. After all that he's done, we would not be speaking. So I said, Sheree is better than me because absolutely not. So as they're taking pictures together, we see Martell arrive. Now I thought it was funny when Bob and Martell exchanged hellos. It was kind of tense in my opinion. It gave a very awkward introduction. It was very brief. But Sheree wants them all to be a happy family. I said, okay, girl, you got Martel with no money and five children, and he's a serial cheater. He's not even claiming you as his girlfriend on Love and Marriage Huntsville, but you want to sit up here and pretend like it's a real relationship and you guys are just so happy and are about to float off into the sunset, then whatever. But I just said, I just can't take it anymore. I think that is really an embarrassment that Sheree has stooped so low to get with Martell Holt. Now, mind you, everybody's there except for Drew and Marlo. Marlo couldn't make it because there was a death in her family. I think she said that one of her cousin's grandmothers passed away. So she had to go back to St. Petersburg to attend the funeral. So now we see Drew pull up in the driveway and she calls Candy. She's like, hey girl, I'm out front right now, but I really don't think I'm gonna come in because the man who assaulted me is in Sheree's house and I don't wanna be anywhere near him. So I'm like, girl, who assaulted you? What happened? Come to find out it was Anthony. Now we all remember thirsty Anthony from last season. He was dogging out Sheree. He was Drew's assistant, then he wasn't Drew's assistant, just a hot mess. I was surprised that Anthony was there because the way that him and Trey went back and forth, the way he dogged her out, I was just like, this is weird. So anyhow, Candy and Mayetta go outside to check on Drew. They're like, girl, what's happening? Are you all right? And we learned that there's bad blood between Drew and Anthony because a few months ago, she was at the club in the VIP section having a good time. Her shoes were up on the booth and Anthony came over and he threw the shoe at her. She says that it got real dramatic, real messy, and the police were called. So Drew goes on to say how hurtful it is that Sheree would invite somebody who assaulted her because she thought that her and Sheree were actually building a friendship. Now I said, Drew, here's why I get irritated because you're a dummy to think that Sheree actually will look out for you. Sheree doesn't like you. She's made that very clear. So for you to think that she actually had you in mind when she was planning this party. Now I understand why she probably wouldn't want to be around somebody who threw a shoe at her. I wouldn't want to either. But at the same token, I'm filming a show. I'm one of the main characters. And I'll be damned if I have this sideshow sit up here and run me away from filming a scene and collecting my check. I feel like Sheree had security there. She wasn't gonna allow anybody to act crazy in her house. So I probably would just pop my head in for a minute and then popped right back out. Because again, I'll be damned if I allow somebody like Thirsty Anthony to run me out of an event. So Drew leaves and now Candy and Mayetta go back in the house. Candy relays to Sheree what just happened. She's like, yeah, Drew was in the driveway, but she didn't feel comfortable because Anthony's here. So Anthony's standing right next to Sheree. So he turns around, he's like, ain't nobody thinking about Drew's wide ass. And I was like, Anthony, you're just so desperate. Like I really cannot stand desperation. And it's embarrassing. You wanna be on this show so bad. 
So Candy's playing peacemaker. She's like, look, Anthony, what's the issue? What's the deal with you and Drew? Like, why all the bad blood? So here goes Anthony doing the most for no reason. And he's like, the only issue that I have with Drew is that her marriage is unsuccessful and her acting career is down the drain. And I'm thinking, okay, you're trying to shade her, but what are you doing? How do you make money? You're sitting up here bopping around from housewife to housewife trying to work for them and getting paid in pennies, but you're trying to shade her. It's just like, it's so crazy to me. So now we find out from Sheree that her and Anthony settled their beef. Anthony apologized to her, so they're great. Then she says that Anthony is the reason why her and Martell are together. Now I said, oh, okay, so, so you and Anthony are BFFs now because of this little fake romance that you have going on with Martell Holt. Got it. So now Candy's asking Anthony about the whole shoe incident. So Anthony's making excuses, talking about he lives for women and he loves women and he's not out here fighting women. But the reason why he read Drew so bad and did what he did, because Drew owes him a coin and she threw her cheap bag at him first. Now, while Anthony might be messy as anything, I do believe that. I wouldn't be surprised if Drew is out here not paying people either and there's some funny stuff with her. I could see it because the way she has a new assistant, a new chef, a new housekeeper in every other episode, I'm like, yeah, girl, what's going on? But however you slice it, I don't care to see Anthony on my screen. He's desperate. I don't do desperate people. And when you're just that thirsty to be on TV, it's very off-putting. Now, when we see Kenya, Sheree, and Martel talking off to the side, I think it is so funny how Sheree shades her good friend every chance she gets. Because when Kenya said, hey, Martel, can I talk to you for just a minute? I just want to talk to you about what went down the last time I saw you. I wasn't trying to come at you crazy. I was just defending my friend. Like, I love Sheree to death and... And I look out for her because she's my friend. So when Kenya went on to say how she didn't appreciate how aggressive Martel was acting towards her that night because she didn't have a man with her. And then Trey was like, girl, you never have a man with you. Like, when do we ever see you with a man? Never. So stop. And I was like, Sheree, girl, stop. Because you just now got a boyfriend on your arm this season. Because it has been seasons and we've yet to see you with the date. And let's not forget how Tyrone embarrassed you last season in love with the man in prison who stood you up on national TV, but yet you want to clown Kenya talk about, oh, she never has a man with her. Like, girl, stop. And Martell is no prize. A serial cheater with five kids and barely any money. Can't even cover a $1,200 bill at Nobu for your damn birthday. So Martell apologizes to Kenya, and now he's asking Kenya if she feels like she played a part in that night. And Kenya says, look, if I offended you, I apologize. And now Martel points out that she cursed him out and Kenya denies it. Now Kenya, when they played the tapes back, honey, you called him a piece of you know what, like you were cursing at him. I was like, girl, you were not singing his praises that night. You were calling him everything but a child of God. So I said, yeah, girl, you were definitely cursing at him. Let's not have selective memory. But Martell is not a good person. The way he treats women, I really don't care if somebody is cursing him out. Like, <laughs> if I'm being real. <laughs> so the moment that they've all been waiting for has finally arrived. Sheree pushes out this gorgeous carriage and her glam daughter is in there. And when I tell you the way my ovaries were doing jumping jacks, Sheree's granddaughter is a doll. And I thought it was so cute that she was trying to sleep. She was like, I don't care about all these people looking at me. I need my beauty rest. Like, okay, leave me alone. I'm gonna take a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> if Sheree could give us these tender moments when she's actually vulnerable and sweet, she would actually be enjoyable to watch. But she's just so cold and shows no emotion and she's just so shady. And I'm like, girl, can we see a likable side of you? Now it's time for them to take family pictures. And we see Sheree with her kids and Bob's in the picture. And now there's this other woman in the picture and all the ladies are off to the side and they're confused. They're like, who's that woman with Bob? Is she his girlfriend? 
Is she a friend? Like, what's going on? So Candy's like, maybe it's a daughter that we don't know about. So now they're going back and forth like, no, I think that's his girlfriend. So now Kenya points out that this woman looks like Bob. So while they're trying to put two and two together, we see Sheree call Martell over. She wants Martell in the family pictures. Now I'm like, why do you want this fake boyfriend of yours to be in pictures that are going to last a lifetime? But Sheree thought that that was Bob's girlfriend. So she wanted to be petty and that's why she put Martell in the pictures too. So now the women all call Sheree over. They're like, Sheree, who is that woman in the pictures with Bob? Was that his girlfriend? Is that a daughter? So Sheree's like, yeah, I don't know either. Let me find out. The way I was gagging when Sheree called Bob over and she was like, introduce me to Candace. And he was like, daughter, this is mama Sheree. And Sheree was like, daughter? We were married all this time. What do you mean that you have another daughter? So we find out from Sheree that before her and Bob got married, Bob told her that he had two other kids and she was under the impression that Bob had a total of four kids, the two before her and the two that they had together. So for her to find out that this whole time he had a third kid, she's like, are you serious? So everybody's spilling the tea about Bob. Kenya says that one of her good friends at one point was one of Bob's side pieces when he was married to Sheree. And she had no idea that he was married to Sheree. Now we all know that Bob was cheating on Sheree throughout that entire marriage. Their marriage was miserable. That's the definition of you're only with somebody for money because they're a terrible spouse, a terrible parent. They don't care about you. All you have is their money. They don't respect you. They don't value you. There's no love, affection. Like that's really sad. And the fact that Sheree put up with that for over a decade says a lot. I always got the impression that had Sheree not joined Housewives, she probably would have stayed with Bob. But Candace and Sheree talk. Candace says that she's been to many family events and Callie and Cairo have been really nice to her, really welcoming to her. And I was like, I want to know what family events is she talking about that Sheree wasn't at? Like, I just don't know how this worked where Bob was able to not disclose that he had a third child all this time. Now, when I watched the after show, Sheree reveals that the kids told her that Bob's not 100% sure that Candace is his actual daughter. He hasn't taken the test yet but he's just going around claiming her as his daughter. So who knows what the truth is? Honestly, I do think that that is Bob's daughter because she does favor Bob. So now the other women call Bob over. They're like, Bob, that's your daughter? They're like, how old is she? So Bob's trying to do the math. He's like, uh, well, uh, she's three years younger than my oldest daughter. And they're like, well, how old is she? I just said, I don't know why you guys would ask Bob anything. You're not going to get the truth. So Kenya's asking Bob, why didn't he ever tell Sheree any of this? And he's like, well, we were on a need to know basis. So Kenya's like, what the F are you talking about? You guys were married. That was your wife. Get it through your head that Bob did not care that he was married. And again, it really shows you that Sheree's self-esteem has never been up to par because of the treatment that she's accepted from all these men throughout the years. There's a pattern with her because for you to put up with Bob's nonsense for all those years, that's very telling. And when Bob was getting defensive at them questioning him, and then when he said, wait till I show you guys the twins, and he was like, oh, I'm just joking. And it's like, again, Bob is such a jackass because for you to sit up here and hide this big secret for all these decades, like what's wrong with you? I also feel like Sheree might have known about this third child. I don't know. I think that with the marriage that they had, Bob was such a cheater. He wasn't home. I wouldn't be surprised if Sheree suspected that there were other children in the mix. I don't know. I just really find this hard to believe that Candace was around Cairo and Callie and not once did they ever say, hey mom, we met our other sister today at some family function. Like, I don't know. 
And we end the episode with all the women taking a group picture with Sheree. But y'all, that was my recap. And I am quite excited that we are almost done with our Atlanta journey because next week is the finale. And I cannot wait to see where Drew files for divorce and we find out more about this relationship that she has going on with Mimi Faust, ex-fiance Ty. I want to hear it all. But again, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.